Hi, Jenna. Hi, Mr. B. Hey, how you doing? Oh. Sorry, I just had to take like a three minute shower. All good, no worries. <laughs> Uh, I saw I couldn't come earlier this morning. I was at my sister's graduation, so. Good for you. Good for you. So, yeah. You actually chose <laughs> to go to your sister's graduation? I did at 7.30 in the morning, so. Oh, <laughs> dear God. It's a wonder you're still not asleep from all the speeches. I know. It's brutal. Uh, um, I just wanted to ask a few things about grades am i allowed to ask it in here or should yeah. i like skip over it if you? it's jenna the caveat mm -hmm. is if you don't mind having other people hear you okay if, that's yeah no i don't really care i'm just kind of like trying to figure out like the best way to succeed in your class um because like first i wasn't sure about participation because i only got like a 50 but i felt like i participate like two to three times per class and like is there like a threshold i need to reach or something no jenna ba bottom line I need to get, I need to basically slap people across the head right now to tell them to get into the discussion forum. Got okay? it. Basically, my guess is you either did the scavenger hunt or you answered the questions. Okay. So that's why that was what that was based upon. And I thought that I had emailed everybody and explained that that's what that was based on. Okay. So it's based on discussions. Okay. I yes. did the scavenger hunt. And yeah, I didn't know the two questions were also due. The two questions said June 6th, so I wasn't really sure. And honestly, I'm telling you right now, trust me, trust me on it, okay? Okay, yes, sir. That, that's the only thing. And I have to do, the reason, Jenna, is it is when you guys, if you guys get together and you start answering questions and you start bantering back and forth, that's mm -hmm. when knowledge really gets done. So gotcha. the discussion forum really, really helps in that regard. So okay. that is what that, that was what that score is about. I'm telling you right now, don't worry about it. Okay, got it. Right. I will, then I'll work on that. Um, and then my other question was just about the graphing assignment. So I understood like some of like your, the comments you made, like I, for two of the graphs, I forgot the line of best fit. Um, so I get that, but I just wasn't sure like how you wanted us to submit a hand-drawn graph on an assignment that was turned in online kind of I just put it in excel because I wasn't sure how I was supposed to do that okay um well if you got graded then you submitted it correctly okay all right I I believe what I told you to do was I wanted the first set of data I wanted that to be hand grafted graphed yes and the next two I wanted you to do in excel yes some people misunderstood, and what they did was they uh, um, they uh, did the opposite. They did two hands and one Excel. Yeah, I did all Excel because I wasn't sure how to submit like a hand drawn picture. Was I supposed to print it out and then like submit it? Like I just I just put that one in Excel. No, basically, well. all you had to have done was get a piece of graph paper. Okay. Take a picture of it, store the picture, and then upload the file. Okay. Jenna, it's not going to happen again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes, sir. Literally speaking, the reason, the reason that chemistry teachers want you to hand graph it is so that you know the nuances of what's going on in a graph. Okay. Gotcha. From now on, you will never have to hand graph anything in your life if you have Excel. Okay. And it's so much easier. Okay. And you have to understand, I'm a techophobe. I cannot stand technology. Yeah. Even I would rather do use Excel. Okay, make sense? Okay, yes. Okay, and guys, you're having to put up with my hair being the way it is. Sorry, just got out of the shower. I was talking with another student until about, literally about 9.38. Anybody have any questions? This is, uh, uh, right now, this is office hours. Anybody have any questions about what is going on? I have a question. I'm here, Anaya. Of course you okay, have a question. So, you wouldn't um, be Anaya if you didn't have a question. Okay. Um, so the the graphing quiz, I took it and I saw some of the answers and I was just a little, because when you put it in Excel, it gives us slopes and stuff. So I don't understand how I'm, 
and I know you have to go back and look through it, but I don't understand how the question would be wrong if that's what the Excel gave us, you know? All right, let's go and talk. Let's talk specifically about what we're doing. Do you mind if I show yours? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we're going into... Anaya, this was... Okay, you're in the face-to-face -face lab, right? Yes. Okay. Same, it's the same quiz. Okay. Okay. That's not what I wanted to do. I'll see if I can get in here. Okay. Like, for example, like when it asks us the slope and then we have to put in, like um, for my graph. Okay. Are you asking about a question like this one, Anaya? No, not a question like this one, a question like, Samantha, when I need to talk to you after class. Okay. Samantha. I think it was for the um the water versus time graph, and it was like negative ten x plus twenty two or twenty one. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, there was a graph of water depth versus temperature. Yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that might be it. But I put in the right. I put in what my slope was for it, and it it was wrong. How wrong was it? I've got I. It was negative ten plus twenty two. That's what I got, and that's what. Oh, okay. Um, What's that the point might one? be why. Why? Because I'm looking at the answer and it, it, that would trip me up. So it was 0. 0.999, I think. And let me look at it real quick. Okay. I think I just answered my question, but that would make sense. Okay. I understand. So I'm redeemed? Yes. I was Thank just, because I was just, um, I, was, I just want to know why I wasn't right, but I think that I overlooked the decimal places when I was answering the question. I okay. don't know how I could have made it any clearer than that, Anaya. No, yeah, that was, that's me, because I, yeah, no, because my graph is 0 0.099, and I thought it was 0 0.99, or uh, 9.99. 0 0.099, right? Yeah. Okay, so if it's 0 0.099, then... Absolutely, the first answer should be the correct one. Okay. Anybody have anything else, guys? Okay, what we're going to do today in class, and I got 10 more minutes before this starts. What I'm going to do today in class is I'm going to go over first, second, and zero order, how that's determined from graphing and how you're going to be able to use the points that are collected. This is the only time I will ever ask you to use points to make a slope. It's just an easy way to make the determination of first, second, or zero order. So we're gonna go over that again. We are then gonna go from there, we're gonna go through some half-life problems and we're gonna get through Arrhenius's, uh, the relationship between temperature and uh, rate loss. That's what we're gonna get through today. Thursday, we're gonna go through mechanisms in the first half of the class. And I am hoping to go through some thinking problems with you in the second half of the problem. Now guys, be aware, please. I am in, am I in the right place? Yes, no, I'm not. 
that explains why I can't see what I want, need to see. All right, be aware. If you are not aware, go in the modules. Down about after all of the assignments, after all the homeworks, you get this module called test material. You have thinking questions and you have number problem questions. You will face both on the test next Tuesday. So you do have practice problems to work. Any questions about that? All right. Uh, questions about, well, these are office hours. Questions about assignments. Understand lab assignments, especially for the online people. No, absolutely for the online people. If we do an experiment during the week, if I talk about an experiment during the week, this week we're doing, we did heat of vaporization this morning. On Thursday, we're gonna do colligative properties slash freezing point depression. Both of those laboratories are due at midnight, June 6th, which is midnight on Sunday. Be aware of that. Face-to-face -face lab. I'll talk, I'll talk to you later about what is due. Now I got very poor, very poor response to the scavenger hunt and the answers to the scavenger hunt which explains why I submitted a participation grade. If I don't do this, then what's gonna happen is you guys are not gonna respond throughout the entire semester and you're gonna lose that 50 points for the forum discussion. Starting this Sunday, you have to do three responses, three responses to the forum discussion in order to get full participation points. You do one, you get four points for the day. Two, you get seven points. Three, you get all 10. I've submitted some homework problems. It would do you good to look at those problems. Any questions about that, ladies and gentlemen? When does it open? Uh, the discussion should be open now, Anaya. Okay, and I have I'm, to. I'm. Let me go student view. You got those two at least. <clears throat> let me check on that. You've got at least two June 6th. There should be another three problems there. And that may be my fault. And we just have to go through and answer each one of these. Well, you, you can, again, you have, you have options, Anaya. Okay. You can go into the student forum and make a comment there. Like, what did Mr. Popovich mean when he was talking about half-life? Okay. Perfectly good. That would work. Or because a lot of people don't know what to answer, I have put in questions. Okay. I do not know why I've got no tags there. I don't know why this is not published, why you can't see it, but I will figure it out.
do not know why the, oh, no. I got those three in there. Why didn't the other ones work? I don't know, I'll fix it. But for right now, you have two more problems. You need three responses by the end of the week. Other questions, guys? How many questions is the test? Don't know. There'll be t there will be 11 thinking problems. Probably on top of that, six or seven no number problems, roughly. That is roughly. Ah, that's why I'm an idiot. You're not allowed to say that back to me though. Okay, the dis all the discussion questions are out there. Any other questions, guys? We got four more minutes. Okay, you got... I have a question. I'm here. Um, on the, the quiz four, I think the one that was due today, what formula should I have used for where it's asking about percent? Okay. That was quiz four. Quiz four, Anaya? I, yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Okay, we're in questions. Okay. Which question is it, Anaya? Um, I think it's question Was it on five, kinetics five. or question five? Yes. Okay. So you you were supposed to use you're supposed to use Raoult's law. New pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the original vapor pressure, okay? Now, if I'm lowering the pressure by 10%, that means that, that means that my P0 is going to be 100% and my new pressure is going to be 90% of that value. Okay? So, if I'm doing that, keep that in mind, okay? I need to get out of here so I can get into where I need to be right now. So, I stopped. I know I stopped sharing for a second. Okay. So, Anaya, if P0, if, if the new pressure is 90% is of what the old pressure is, then it doesn't matter what you started at. It's still going to be 90% of that. Does that okay. make sense, Anaya? Yes, that makes sense. Okay, so I gotta get, here I am, share screen. There we go. So, let me get to the very end of here. I, sorry, I just need some place to work. So, P nu is equal to X times P zero. It doesn't matter what P zero is. It doesn't matter. 
because if the new pressure is 90% of it, then P nu divided by P zero is going to be equal to 0.9. Does that make sense? Yes. So if that's the case, that is equal to X, which is equal to moles solvent divided by moles solvent plus moles solute. And I think you have the information to solve the rest of the problem. Yes. Okay. And b before you before you start, I just want to ask one more thing. So for the pre-lab today, is it not a quiz? The pre-lab today? Is, is there? I, have... I, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I was expecting when I opened the, uh, the report portion for you, I was expecting for you for it to be a quiz that just got submitted. My guess is that the pre-lab is... Because I printed out the lab and there's a pre-lab paper attached to it. Um, for, just, just, just ask me, just for um, colligative no. properties, that's what we're doing. No, for we're doing the, vapor pressure. I mean, oh, for the lab today. Okay, you got my mind in a separate thing. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, no. It's the, I have it right here in front of me. You should have had a, you should have had a quiz for that, Anaya. Um, Thank yeah, you. I don't think, I didn't see a quiz. Yeah, I'm in the same class and I didn't see a quiz either. The vapor, the um, pre-lab quiz? Yeah. No. I that's what it's for the freezing point, I think. Yeah. Because we already did vapor oh. pressure last week. Okay. Now the freezing point depression, you're gonna have to pull it up. The uh, the pre-lab is at the very end. That's what yeah, that's what I was saying. It's on the yeah. It's at the very end of this. That's it. Okay. Okay. That's at the very end. And it's simple, guys. You should be able to do that relatively easy. All you got to do is draw a straight line down here, straight line over there, wherever they meet, that's going to be the freezing point. Okay. Okay. And the other questions there. Okay. You've got the freezing point on the graph. I think it tells you what the original freezing point was. Normal freezing point is this. So you got to tell me how much it was depressed. Then you got to use the KF for the solution, which is 5.212. Use that to determine what the molality is and how many moles of the molar mass of the unknown polymer. Okay, so that's where the pre-lab is for the face-to-face -face laboratory. Gina, Jana, Jana. Yeah, I had a question that's unrelated to this. So I'm just gonna wait until you finish up with this. Okay, good enough. Okay, now how do you, okay, good. I got out of that, wonderful. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, as soon as I find my marbles, we're going to get started here. Stop share, share screen. Jana, okay, Jana, you need to take your hand. You have to hand, you have to take your hand down. Yeah, I still haven't asked my question. Okay, go ahead and ask it. Might as well um, do it now. So with the PowerPoint, are we updating the new ones that with the new added information? Because I still see like old PowerPoints. You're gonna and... have to deal with that, Gianna. 
I don't have time to upload everything. Great. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to deal with that. Okay. All right, this is what we were working on last Tuesday. So what you are going to have to figure out, you are gonna to have to make a determination using the information that's given to determine what gives you a straight line. Remember that if you are plotting, if you're plotting the concentration directly versus the time, it's a zero order. And that, that is a straight line, it's zero order. If you have the LN versus time, LN of the concentration versus time, it's first order. If you have one over the concentration versus the time, and that gives you a straight line, it is a second order. So when you get given a problem such as this, what I will give you is I will give you the time and I will give you the concentration. You have to make two more columns. You have to take the LN of the concentration and you have to take one over the concentration to give you new values. So we want the slope. This is the only time I will ever tell you to do this. The way you get slope is you determine two different points. So I'm gonna have my first point, zero seconds, five molar, second point, 80 seconds, 2.5 molar. This is gonna be my Y value. This is gonna be my X. So I'm gonna take 2.5 minus five, over 80 minus 0, 0.00. That will give me a slope. Now I'm going to take two more values. I'm going to use the 0. 0.160 and 1.67 and 240 and 1.25. I'm going to take 1.25, subtract 1.67 from it, divide that by 240 over 160. I get two slopes. I'm going to compare the two slopes. If they are equal, then I am going to say they're the same. If they're the same, the slopes are the same, that means I have a straight line. Then it's concentration versus time, zero order. Are you understanding what we're doing here, ladies and gentlemen? So for the first one, 0582.5, I am getting a slope of 0 0.0313. I took 2.5, I subtracted five from it. I'm looking, this point, 2.5 minus five, over 80 minus zero, I get a slope of 0 0.0313. I do my second slope, 1.25 minus 1.67. I get a negative 0.42. I subtract 240 from 160, I get 80. So I get 0.42 divided by 80, I get a slope of 0 0.00525, negative 0 0.00525. The first time I did the slope, I get 0 0.0313. Second time I did the slope, I get 0 0.00525. Are the two slopes equal? No. They are not equal. Therefore, I do not have a straight line. 
Since I do not have a straight line, the graph of zero versus time does not give me a straight line. It cannot be zero order. So I'm going to do my second possibility, the ln of the concentration versus time. I'm going to take 0.916, subtract 1.61, and divide that by 80 minus zero. This gives me 0.895 as my slope. I'm going to use, because it's easier this way, I'm going to do this, these two values. 0 minus 0.223 divided by 320 over 240. This gives me a result of 0 0.022, 0.0. 279. Is that the same as 0.895? No. So I'm going to do the third value, 1 over A. I'm going to subtract 0.4 and 0.2 and divide that by 80 minus 0. This gives me 0 0.0025. Okay, I'm going to subtract 1 and 0.8 and subtract 320 and 240. And that also gives me a slope of 0 0.0025. So the slope of the comparison of these two points with these two points is the same. Since the slope is the same, I know that I have a straight line. So the value of 1 over a versus time gives me a straight line. Therefore, I know that I have 1 over the concentration versus time gives me a straight line. I know that my reaction is second order. Now, I know I just talked you through it. Are you comfortable with that? Benita, are you comfortable with that? Yes. Samantha? Yeah. Sakari? <laughs> Sakari, what am I, how, sorry, how did you pronounce your name? It's Sachari. Sachari, Sachari, sorry. It's fine, I understand it. You understand it? Everybody is good with this. Again, I'll ask the question. Yep. You can do it. You can do it if you graph it. But literally speaking, ladies and gentlemen, if you graph it, it's going to take you a whole lot more time. Trust me. Questions on this? Questions, guys? Would it be OK if I use the graphing calculator that way? I have no problem with that, Anaya. OK. Again, if you want to, I go through this. Be careful about this first one. They look the same, but this one is a 10 times less than this one is. These are fairly clear. This one is dead on. And this is doing one over the concentration versus time. They have the same slope, so therefore, it is second order. So how do we find K? We know it's second order and we know 
that we just plotted one over A versus T and got a straight line. Riddle me this, Batman. What is the rate constant? Somebody venture a guess. Is it the slope? It's the slope, guys. If you do the graph, because my equation, again, very important slide, because my equation of one over A, which is basically Y, and T, which is gonna be X, that graph gave me a straight line. What's in front of my X value? It is K. So therefore, when I do plot one over A versus T and I get a straight line, my constant is going to be the slope. For first, and, for first order and zero order, understand that the slope is going to be negative. So your negative slope will be equal to a negative K. K is always going to be a positive number. Questions on that? Oh, wait, I have a quick question. So even if your slope is negative, your K is going to be positive no matter what? K will always be positive, Jenna, because okay. if you look at the equations, look at, look at the equation for the integrated rate law for zero order and the integrated rate law for first order. I'm telling you, if you have a first order reaction and you plot ln of A versus T, you are going to get a straight line, but that's going to have a negative slope. But don't worry about it because your negative slope value is going to be equal to minus K. Okay, so they cancel out. So they cancel out. On the other hand, you. when you plot one over A versus T, you get a line with a positive slope. So it directly is equal to K. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So a couple of things we can do from this. Right now, we know what the orders are. We can determine what K is. So we can now determine what the rate law is Be just from doing the graph because we can get the slope. We got K. We now know it's first or second order. We can then determine what it is in relationship in terms of the order versus that particular concentration. If I've got a second, if I have a second compound, then I also have to do determine the order in that way for that second compound. But that would take too long. So I'm not going to do that to you. Now, if we get into another area, something called half-life. Basically, by definition, it's the time required for half of it to react or similarly, the time for half of it to remain. If we realize that the concentration at time T is one half of what the original concentration is, we can plug it into the integrated rate laws and make a determination. If I've got a first order process, that first order process was the LN of the sample at time T. Remember, this normally would be the concentration at time T. But because the concentration at time T is equal to half of what it is originally, when I plug this in here, the A zeros cancel and I get the LN of 0.5 is equal to minus K times the time at the half-life. So literally speaking, 
This is going to become very important, especially when we get to radioactivity. Because radioactivity is a first order process. Half-life for a first order process is equal to 0.693 divided by my rate constant. If I do the same thing for second order, okay, what I do, one over, this is concentration at time t. One over concentration at time t is half of the original concentration. So this mathematically, one over half of A0 is the same thing as saying two over A0 is equal to KT half-life plus one over A0. These subtract out. So I get one over A0 is equal to KT at half-life or one over my rate constant times my original concentration is going to be what my half-life is. Zero order. Again, we get concentration at time t is equal to one half concentration original. I get one half a zero is equal to negative kt plus a zero. Negative one half a zero is equal to kt, or a zero divided by two k is equal to t half. Now we have our three equations for half-life depending upon order. Again, I keep, I've said this slide a couple times, guys. This would be something I would print out. I would make sure that you have this somewhere close at hand because you are going to need it. Okay, I've got a reaction, AB going to A plus B. The plot of one over AB versus time yields a straight line. Jenna, the plot of one over A zero versus time, a plot of A, one over A versus time gives me a straight line. What order do I have? Uh, second order. Second order, okay? Now, if the slope of my line was 0.55 molarity per second, what is K? Um, one over 0.55. What is K? What's K the equal slope? to here? Oh, the slope. If the slope is 0.55 oh, molarity per 0.5. second, what's K? 0.55 molarity per second. Okay, so we have the, it's a second order. So I know that my half-life is equal to one over the original concentration times K. So if my original concentration is 0.80, what is the half-life? My half-life is going to be equal to one over 0.55, the slope times my original concentration. Since this was in meters per second, my answer, my half-life is going to be in seconds. Be aware, be aware of what this value is, because this is gonna tell you the label for your half-life, whether it's minutes, years, or whatever. Questions on that? All right. Second part of this, my original concentration is 0.250. The reaction took 75 seconds. 
What is the final concentration? My integrated rate law says one over the concentration at time t is equal to my, uh, my rate constant times the amount of time plus one over the original concentration. So literally speaking, I plug this in for the original concentration, this in for the time, this in for K. And my rate constant times my time plus one over 250 will give me my value of one over my concentration at time T. This times this is 41. Notice seconds cancel. I'm left with M to the minus one plus one divided by 250 is four again. That's divided by molarity. So it's molarity to the minus one. I add these two together and do math magic one over 45 M to the minus one is equal to my concentration 0 0.022 M is my concentration at 75 seconds if I started off with 0 0.250 molar. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see who's maybe paying attention and who's not. Natalie, are we good? Athar? Jana? Yeah. Rhea? Does it make sense? All we're really doing is plugging values in. We analyzed the problem in this fashion. We saw the one over the concentration versus time yields a straight line. We go to our magic table. We look and we see, oh, one over the concentration is equal to K times T. That's second order. If it's second order, I know that the slope is equal to K. So if I want the half-life, I just plug in the value of my original concentration and my K. So that will give me what my half-life time is. If I have an original concentration and a time, I plug that into the integrated rate law to solve for how much I have left. Understand, I can also ask you, if my original concentration is 0 0.250 and it took 75 seconds, I'm sorry, if my original concentration is 0 0.250, my final concentration is 0 0.022. How much time did it take? I would then plug the 0 0.022 in for the A at time T. I would plug the 0 0.250 in for there for the AB at time zero. I would plug K in and I would solve for T. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Can you go back to the half slide? This slide? No. And where you solved it for the half life? That one? Yeah. Okay, thank you. No, no. Uh, this is the one. Okay, thanks. The half life formula is one over K times the concentration at time zero. Okay, Questions, thanks. ladies and gentlemen, about this? A first, first order reaction has a half-life of 154 seconds. What is K? I have a half-life of 154 seconds. Somebody tell me how to solve for K.
Leonardo. First order reaction. First order reaction. And I have a half life of 154 seconds. Leonardo, can you tell me? Just give me the formula. First order reaction, half life is 154 seconds. What is K? So it would be um, the first order half life reaction of, and then T would be 154. So it'd just be 0. 0.693 over 154 equal to K. 0. 0.6, 0. 0. 0.693 divided by the 154, which I got as 0. 0.0045. Okay. Second part of the question. I have a concentration of 0. 0.250. Is that the original concentration or is that the concentration at time T, Rehab? The concentration at time T. All right, read the problem, Rhea. What did I, what concentration did I start with? And what concentration did I end up with? I mean, you started with the 225. Okay, my 250. So is that my original concentration? Is that my concentration at time zero? Or is that my concentration at time T? Time zero. Time zero. So the point zero nine oh eight is the concentration at time t. Okay, so we just determined our k. Our k was point zero zero four five because we knew what the half life was. So let's go, Emily. First order reaction. My K is equal to 0 0.0045. I have an original concentration of 0 0.250. And I have a final concentration of 0 0.0908. How long did it take? 0 0.0908 is what remains. 0 0.250 is what I started with. And my K is equal to 0 0.0045. Emily, first order reaction. Tell me, at least set up the problem for me. Um, I don't know. I don't know is a perfectly good answer. Parker? So you would use the first order integrated rate law. Oh, good. And then you would plug in the, on the, for the just regular A, it would be the, uh, the point, was it 0. 0.9 or 0. 0.09? 0. 0. 0.0908, okay. That'd be on the left. And then- LN, The LN of that value. Yep. And then you have the K from the last problem. Negative 0. 0.0045. And then the initial was the 0.25. Plus 0 0.250. So if I'm gonna do that, if I'm gonna do that, I'm plugging in the LN of 0 0.0908 is equal to negative K times T plus the LN of 0 0.250. I solve this out and I get 222 seconds is equal to T. Very valuable tool, ladies and gentlemen. We now know, we now can tell how long a reaction is going to take for it to go to completion or for us to get a reasonable amount back or to get back how much we need. Questions on how to solve these problems. Who haven't I picked on yet today? Ethan. Hi. All right. 
So. Uh, okay. We want the pressure after a certain time, right? Reading that, mm -hmm. Ethan? Yep. So what equation are we going to use for this? Um, Did you see which order it was? Uh, I Can you go back to the quiz? I didn't see what order it was. Mm. Sorry, I got to find this silly thing. There it is. Okay, so it's first order. Um, so we we so we used the first uh, the integrated rate will offer the first order equations, and we're solving for. Um, copy it down. Copy it down if you don't have it down yet, Ethan. Copy the general formula down because I'm going to want you in a second to plug in the numbers. Um, okay. Anybody having trouble with these problems? Do you also have practice problems for these? I believe I do. Okay, okay. so we are solving for uh, A, like not, not A zero, like A here. So um, finish. So for A zero, we would put 0 0.3. Uh, like Is it uh, a zero, Ethan? Or a. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, excuse me. Is it a? Is it a or is it something else? Um, I'm, wait. Or can we not put uh, can we not put the uh, inertial pressure at like a zero because like it's well it's like that it's only for like concentrations or no no it's fine you're just saying a is equal to something for no, no I I I meant like uh like a zero like on the right side of the equation ln like we're, of we're solving a for a ln of a zero or yeah. L, L, ln of A0. Is equal to? Uh, well, ln uh, 0 0.350 atmospheres. Right? No. We are going, look, this is our first order rate law, right? Right here? Mm, yeah. So I want to know what the concentration at some time t is. So ln of this value is my unknown. Mm -hmm. Do I have K, Ethan? Uh, oh, I, uh, uh, Do I have K? Do, oh yeah, it's a 3.2 uh, E, like a negative. E to the minus so, four, yeah. okay. Do I have the time? Uh, Eight minutes. Okay, which now I have to convert see? to seconds. Good. This is in seconds. I got to take the eight minutes and convert it to four hundred and eighty seconds. Yep. All right. So that's negative rate constant times my time plus uh, plus L. Oh wait, would it just be plus the zero point three fifty eight? No. Oh. Why do you want to get rid of the LNs, Ethan? It, I mean, because well, like for like I thought I included like uh like the LN the first time, and I thought you like said that was like wrong. Maybe no, no, I'm, I'm Ethan. I'm sorry if I said that. I, if I if I did, said that, it was because I didn't hear you right. Okay, so uh, okay, so I guess. So like the A uh, zero, like that would, you would like kind of like plug in for that part of the equation. That's the 0 0.350 atmospheres, right? Yes. Yeah, that's- I'm gonna do the LN of my concentration at time T. Yeah, so- is that, Go ahead. That's what I 
that's what I said originally, and I saw it like you said it was like long so I got confused. No, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. It's just my mishearing. So I need the ln at the concentration at time t is equal to negative my rate constant times the amount of time in seconds because my rate constant is in per seconds times the ln of the pressure. I drew this math out and do this math out. I get 0.154 is equal to negative 1.05. I raise that to the E power. Okay, is it negative? Yeah, it's like negative. 0.154 mm -hmm. plus 1.05. Yeah. Equals negative 1.2. If it's negative 1.2, that's the LN of my concentration is equal to a negative 1.20. To get rid of the LN, I have to raise both sides e to the power. Oh, okay. And then you get the uh, 0.301. And I get well, 0.301. Yeah. I have a question. Yep. Could you explain one more time why you plugged in uh, 0.350 for the concentration? Because that was the original concentration. Oh, that's there. Con yeah. You can use pressures. You can use pressures as kind of like a concentration. And this should not be that. This should be the label of that should be whatever the pressure was, which was in atmospheres. Does that make more sense to you? Whatever this is, it's going to be, it's going to end up what the label of this is going to be. Whatever the original pressure is in, that is what your final is going to be. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Can you go up to the original question, please? Now this has a little trick on the end of it. Okay. This has a little trick. And that is we have to use Dalton's law to figure out what the partial pressures add up to. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're going on to Arrhenius's law and the temperature. Does anybody remember what I said had to remain constant when we've been dealing with the rate laws so far? What have I said? Temperature. Temperature has to be constant. The reason for that is if you change the temperature, you change the K. So I need to make sure that my K stays a constant and it will at individual temperatures. You change the temperature, you change K, which means that we're gonna to have to relate temperature and rate. Generally speaking, as you increase the temperature, don't you increase the amount of stuff you get back? So as you're increasing the temperature, you're literally increasing the rate. Concentrations haven't changed. So if the concentrations haven't changed and your rate law, your rate increases, then K must be temperature dependent. So a Swedish scientist by the name of Arrhenius developed a mathematical relationship between our K, our rate constant, energy of activation and temperature. And this relationship is 
The rate constant is equal to A, a frequency factor, times E raised to the negative EA energy of activation divided by the rate constant times temperature in Kelvin. This is what the relationship is. K is equal to capital A, E raised to the negative EA over RT. Now, in a collision model of how reactions happen, bonds are broken, new bonds are formed, but this can only happen if molecules collide with each other. If one hydrogen stays in the east part of the United States and the oxygen stays on the western shore, they're never going to meet. They can't collide. They don't react. So they have to react with the correct orientation and with enough energy to cause bonds to break and bonds to form. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands together like this, put them together, link your fingers. Can you get a mesh between your fingers? Now, I want you to do it backwards. Put one, put your putting the back of your hand next to the back of your hand. Can they link? You can't really get this one molecule to link with this one. So molecules have to be oriented correctly. If you hit them with the right amount of energy, but they're not oriented correctly, you are not going to get a reaction. It's a combination of enough energy to break the bonds and those molecules have to be in the right position. So we have our frequency factor A. It is a statistical determination of the number of molecules that are in the right orientation and have the right amount of energy. Our energy of activation. If you're on a golf course and there's this little mound that is between you and the hole, you have to hit the ball with enough force to get it up to the top of the hill so it can then roll down. It's not, you're not gonna get the ball anywhere near the hill if you don't hit it with enough energy. So our energy of activation is the energy required to initiate the reaction. Let me give you an example. If I have a rearrangement of methyl isonitrile to acetyl nitrile, I am literally exchanging. If you see here, I'm exchanging the blue ball for the black one. What I have to do is I have to put in energy to this to basically destabilize this molecule. So I make something that's in a form like that. I have to add energy to it. Then what happens is this activated complex will rearrange. And as it's rearranging, I'm creating bonds. Remember, right here, I'm breaking the bond. That's energy going in. On the other side of the hump, that is creating bonds. That's energy being given off endothermic process, exothermic process. So if the energy that I have, if the energy that's given off by the new bond is more than the energy I had to put in to make it start, that means that I have an overall exothermic reaction. Is this making sense, guys? Can you repeat that? Okay. When you have an, a chemical reaction, 
you're creating an active species, an unstable active species. But in order to originally create that unstable species, I have to put energy in. That's an endothermic process and I need that energy to create my intermediate. My intermediate is not stable. It's going to rearrange into something that is stable. So as it does that rearrangement, I'm creating a bond. Creating bonds is exothermic. Energy is given up. Now, if I give up more energy in making the bonds than it took for me to make the active species, I have an overall exothermic reaction. That means that my products have less energy than what I started with. On the other hand, if I go through the same process, if I go through the same process, I make, I use energy in, I'm making my activated complex, but when I form the bonds, I don't go down as far on my energy chart. That means it took, I gained, I'm sorry, that means I gave off less energy than I had to put in. That makes this an endothermic reaction. Now, I need a minimum amount of energy in order, in order to have enough to make that active species. I need to have a certain amount of energy. If I plot a fraction of molecules versus energy, I have a threshold. All the molecules that get beyond this threshold have enough energy to react. The ones that are on the left side don't have enough energy. So if I'm doing it at one temperature, I have a certain amount of molecules that will react. At higher temperatures, what happens to this distribution is it flattens out and as it flattens out, I get more molecules that have exceeded the energy. So at higher temperatures, I have a larger population of molecules that have this higher energy. Because I have more molecules that have the higher energy, my reaction rate is going to increase. And this whole statistical representation can be also represented in the form of this equation, where R is the rate constant, T is the temperature, and E of A is gonna be this minimum energy needed to start the reaction. Thus, I get a combination of the frequency factor times the amount of molecules that have the correct amount of energy. Arrhenius' equation. Now, again, remember guys, I have a lot of information. I can measure a rate constant, can't I? Ladies and gentlemen, can I not measure a rate constant? We've done that, that's what we did before. We monitored the, the rate from the rate we were able to determine orders by knowing how much concentration we had, by knowing the concentration, the order, and the rate, we were able to calculate K. So we can calculate K. 
Can we measure temperature, guys? So if I'm going to, if I can develop an equation that I can make a straight line out of, I can plot my K versus my temperature and determine my E of A and my A. I do that by literally taking the LN of both sides here. And I end up with the equation, the LN of K is equal to e, negative EA over R times one over T plus the LN of A. Thus, if I have, if I plot LNK as my Y value, if I plot one over T as my X value, I will get a straight line, the slope of which is gonna be equal to negative EA over R. My energy of activation then is gonna be the slope of this graph times negative R. Then once I have E of A, all I have to do is put in a point here, put in a point for one over T and I can solve for LN of A. So basically what you will be given is you will be given a set of temperatures. You have to convert them to K. You will be given K values. You have to convert the K temperature to one over temperature. You have to convert the Ks to LN of K. Then you draw the plot, LN of K versus one over T. I've got a slope of negative 222.87. So I'm gonna use that to be equal to negative EA over R. So I'm basically going to multiply my slope by negative R. That gets me a whole huge number. It gets me about 185, but remember this is joules. Energy of activation needs to be in kilojoules. So I multiply this times this, I get 185,000. I divide by a thousand, I get 185 kilojoules per mole. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Kind of looks like the classiest clapion, doesn't it? Solve it in the same way. Now, I have my formula. I have my LN or K value. It's one of my points here. I now know what one over T is. I plug those into LN of K is equal to minus EA over R times one over T plus LN of A. LN of A is equal to LN K plus this value. I plug in what the LN of K is, what E of A is, what R is, and what one over T is. This gives me a value. I multiply these things out. This gives me a value of 25.22. I then take E raised to that power and that is what my A factor is. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have a question, Professor. Yes. I, I'm a little confused. Where did, where'd you get the two, two, three hundred again? And the, the the number in the parentheses? Okay.
All right, this is our original question. This is, I'm sorry, this is our original equation, correct? Correct. So if this is our original equation, then my ln of k is equal to negative e over r times one over t plus the ln of a, correct? Mm -hmm. So my slope, my slope is equal to minus e a over r, right? My slope was 22,287. 20, 20, 22, so that's where I, what I did was I rounded it. I okay. rounded it to 22,3. Multiplied by my one over T value, which was this, I think. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. For Arrhenius's equation to be valid, the concentrations need to remain constant. So before we got to Arrhenius, temperature was constant. Now we're trying to figure out how K varies. So now we're gonna keep the concentrations the same and we are going to manipulate temperature. All right, we did the two point with Clausius Clapion. We're gonna do the same thing with Arrhenius. If I can determine the value of 1K at one temperature, I can predict what K will be at another temperature if we know what the energy of activation is. Or if I know what both rate constants are and what the temperatures are, I can then determine the value of Ea. If I subtract one of Arrhenius's equations from another, I get the ln of K2 over K1 is equal to minus Ea over R times one over T1 minus one over T2. Again, doesn't this look awfully familiar to Clausius Clapion? We're using the same, same logic here. I have a reaction. The energy of activation is 1.4 e to the fifth joules per mole. If the rate constant at 550 is 1.1 liters per mole, what is the rate constant at 625? Ether, plug in the numbers yes. here. Do we know what the value of one rate constant is? I'm not really sure. Um, Read the problem. I don't know is a good answer, Ether. You're just having this information thrown at you. 
for the first time. Uh, so yeah, let's, I don't know. That's fine. That's perfectly good. Can anybody tell me what one of the rate constants is? Is it the 1.1 liters per mole? 1.1 oh, liters per mole. So I got the LN of, do you want it to go on top or bottom? Um, on top. What am I plugging in for my energy of activation? 1.4 Do I have to change it? Yes, because it needs to be in kilojoules. Okay, what am I dividing it by, Jenna? Uh, by a thousand. No, no, what, no, no. Oh. What, EA gets divided by what? Oh, um, like, uh, isn't it supposed to be like 1.4 E to like two or something? No, 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 Jenna. I'm, I'm not sure. Simpler, simpler. What am I dividing EA by? Oh, R. R. Oh. R is 8.314 watts per watts. Joules per Joules. Um, so do I need to change this? Uh, I guess not. No. Okay. Somebody tell me what I plug in for T1. Did somebody say Is this 550? supposed to be converted to Kelvin? Exactly. 823. Oh, okay. Yeah, Are we good here, guys? We good? Again, I'm just going to put the 1.1 1 .1 divided by K2 equals. I was telling somebody earlier, do this step by step. Don't try and do this in your head. These equations are too complicated for that. Is that number supposed to be 17,000? Yeah. Or is it? Because this is two Wait, sig from figs. Wait, 1.4? This is two sig figs. It's going to end up being 14, two sig figs.
have a question. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Okay, I'm so waiting. For times 10 to the um, fifth, isn't it supposed to be the uh, um, 17,000? I divide, you have to divide it by the 8.314. Oh, uh, okay, that's where you got that one from. Okay, that's my question. Questions, ladies and gentlemen, about this? Did you round to get the 17,000? Yes. Okay. Because I'm dividing, I've got two sig figs here, right? Yes. So yes, ultimately, if you wanted to use the other one, you would get a more accurate answer. Jana, if you I, I get what I'm trying to say is if you waited to the end of the round, you would get a more accurate answer. Jana. Um, I just wanted to ask about the temperatures because I kind of got lost in the slide. Um, we have 550 for, why isn't that not temperature? What? Because, because we're doing one over the temperature. Anytime you're doing one over the temperature, you need to change it to Kelvin. By the way, oh, this answer was okay. wrong. Thank you. Something was, I did E raised to the positive 1.87. Okay, how did I know my answer was wrong? I knew my answer was wrong because I increased the temperature, right? I increased the temperature so that my rate should increase, correct? The only way for my rate to increase is if my constant goes up. My constant went up. My first calculation, my constant went down. So I knew there was something wrong there. Now my constant is higher than what it started at. By the way, this is times e to the fifth. Questions, ladies and gentlemen, about Arrhenius. Again, this is what happens when you round, okay? Even this little bit of an error, even this little bit from 0 0.00121 to 0 0.00122 changes things dramatically when you're dealing with logs. You gave me this answer, I would accept it 100%, guys. I have a quick question. I'm here, I got, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going for the rest of this. That's all, go ahead. Okay, um, for the problem that we just did, I followed everything like the same way, but in between um, like the 1.1 to the fifth and your answer for K2, I think I like, I must have done something wrong. This last, this last part? Yeah. Okay. E raised to the 1.87, negative 1.87 is equal to 0.154, correct? Yes. So 1.1 e to the fifth divided by K2 is equal to a positive 1.54, correct? Yes. 
So I take 1.1 e to the fifth is equal to 0.154 K2. Correct? Yes. So I divide 1.1 e to the fifth by 0.154. I end up with 7.1 e to the fifth. Okay. That makes sense now? Yes, thank you. Okay, one more problem, then we are going to go on to mechanisms. Come on, guys. Are we, is this making sense to you, ladies and gentlemen? One second, I will be right back. Let's take a break.
Okay, guys. Oh, I gotta do one thing. I'll be right back. Okay, how are we doing, guys? Yeah, I know it's dry going through all these equations, but unfortunately, that is the way it is. Questions? Questions, guys? Anything? Okay. I see Ethers here. Jordan is here. Vanessa. I'm here. Thank you so much. Uh, Natalia. Here. Danny. Benita, I saw. Sarah. Here. Gianna, I saw. Jenna, I saw. Jennifer's there. Manuel. Here. Parker, I saw. Samantha is here. Shari. Shari. Araceli. Here. Jessica. Jessica Kramer. Keanu. Valeria. Jana, I saw. Leonardo, I saw. Anaya, I saw. Natalie, I think, is here. Sachari's here. Raylena. Here. Raylena. Here. Rhea, I saw. Emily, I saw. Delexis. And Ethan. Here. All right. Okay. Are we good with this? Do we basically understand what's going on with these, with Arrhenius's and the other ones? What are you not understanding? Is there anything? Are we good, guys? Uh, let's go with one more equation. I've got this reaction and my rate constant at a certain temperature is 2.34, 2.35 E to the fourth. The rate constant at 303 is 9.15 E to the fourth. Calculate the frequency factor. All right. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna use the two point Arrhenius equation to solve for EA. Then we're going to substitute EA and one of the reaction parameters into the Arrhenius equation and solve for A. So we're going to two point. Do I have a volunteer? Volunteer, ladies and gentlemen. Do I have a volunteer, Jordan? I can try. You can, you're not going to just try. You're going to, you're going to do fine. Okay. All right. Remember, this is our equation.
I'm going to add a new slide here. Paste. Copy. Okay, got everything there, Jordan. Remember, the strategy is we're going to use the two point to solve for EA, and then we're going to use the the original one, the one point, to solve for A. The reason we can't use the Arrhenius straight up is the Arrhenius equation straight up is this. Ln of the constant is equal to energy of activation over RT plus the Ln of A. The trouble is we don't know E of A and we don't know A. So we're going to use the two point to find E of A. Then we're going to come back to this one and solve for A. You up for it, Jordan? Yeah, I think so. Okay, here we are. Tell me what to do. Um, okay, well, I have one question. Does it matter which one goes on top and bottom for K1 and K2? Not as long as you keep the K1, the temperature that gave you the first race constant has to be in the first position. Okay, so. As long as you keep them in that order, then it doesn't matter what goes on top and what goes on the bottom. Okay, so can we put the 2.35 to the negative four for K1? I think I have that just as e to the fourth. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's going to cancel out anyway. Okay. Um, and then on the bottom, it would be 9.15 e to the negative four. Okay. You want, if you want negative, I'll put negative in there. Oh, sorry. It doesn't matter. I just have to be consistent. Okay. Um, and then nothing for EA because we're solving for it. And then R is 8.134. Um, and then one over 293. And then minus one over 303. Okay. I'm going to flip this. You set it up perfectly. Do the math out. And this ends up being this number over here. This number. That number is 0 0.00011. R is this number. So if I'm solving for negative EA, I divide 2.35 e to the minus fourth by 9.15 e to the minus fourth. Take the log of that, I get a negative 1.36. I multiply that by R and divide it by this number. That's equal to E of A. That gives me 1.0 E to the fifth joules is equal to my energy of activation. All right. Anybody confused about how I got this answer? I just want to know how did you get the negative 1.36? Divide, divide 2.3. Uh, all right. If I divide 2.35 by 9.14. You don't have to take the ln when you do that? Yes, you do. That's how you get a negative number. Oh, so you just plug it into the calculator just like that? 
Okay. If you divide 235, e to the minus fourth, by 9.15, e to the minus fourth, you end up with 0.257. Anytime you have the log of a number less than one, it's a negative number. So I do that, I get negative 1.36. The log of 0.257 equals negative 1.36. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, another thing that you could check yourself with, E of A has to be a positive number because I'm putting energy in, it's endothermic. So E of A has to be a positive number. Okay, we've done the first one. Now we have to plug it in to the one point. This is the equation for my one point. Why is that not doing it? Why is it screwing up? Yeah, I have no idea why that is screwing up like that. Ah, crap. Okay. So I have this value for my E of A. I'm gonna plug that into My one point, which is Rhea, how are we doing, Rhea? Okay. So what I'm going to do, I've got my one point, Arrhenius. And so I'm going to plug in the values. I just determined what my energy of activation is. So that's going to go in there. And I'm going to use one of the two values I started with to plug in for K and T. Can you do that for me, Rhea? Yes. All right. Good for you. Tell me what I'm doing. So you plug in 2.35 e to the fourth, negative fourth. And then we use the... The 2.93. Okay. Okay. Time. What do I have to do before that, though? Put in the the negative one in the fifth joules. You're going fine. Okay. Divided by R, which is eight point one three one four, and then one divided by two nine three. Do the math out and
Okay, are we good, guys? I have a question. I'm here. Um, so in the equation, it just says r times t. So why are we doing r times? r times 1 over t. In the original equation, it just says r times t. It says ea divided by r over t. Let me see where the original two point. Uh -huh. Okay. Who's asking the question? Emily. Emily, this is the original equation. So it's one over T? It's negative E A over R times one over T. Okay, thank you. That's why, Emily. Do you see we were plotting one over t here versus l and a k? Yeah. Okay. Who likes puzzles? Wait. I Who likes I have a puzzles? On I'm getting a whole lot of nothing here. Who likes puzzles? Anybody mm. like puzzles? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Danny, when you go away for like that for a long time, you have the risk. You almost got marked absent. Be aware of that, okay? So reaction mechanisms. What happens is reactions don't go all at once. Reactions go in little steps that are called simple reactions. When you have the overall reaction, that's what's happening overall, but it goes through a series of simple reactions to get to that overall reaction. And that is what is called the mechanism. When I have a reaction, let's see if I can pull up one, such as this. This one's not too complicated because I got an N2O5 banging into another N2O5. That's possible, isn't it? Isn't it, guys? But what happens if I have something like What happens if I have something like this? It's hard enough getting two things to bump into each other. It becomes astronomically impossible when we have three things. So we have to go by a series of simpler mechanisms to justify this overall reaction from happening. So what we're dealing, when we're dealing with reaction mechanisms are the series of steps that go on, the series of simple, simple reactions that occur to make a more complex reaction overall. These are called elementary reactions or elementary processes. So if my overall reaction is A plus A yielding B. That could go through a series of steps. 
A could react with a third type of molecule to make AC. And then AC reacts with A to make B plus leaving C. Now, what you have to note is that when you add the first elementary step with the second one, it has to add up to the overall reaction. So I have A plus C plus AC plus A. This is everything that's on my reactant side. That yields to AC plus B plus C. Now, if I'm looking at this overall reaction, anything that's the same, left and right, can be canceled out. The C cancels with the C, the AC cancels with the AC. So that my overall reaction becomes A plus A yielding B. Are we understanding the basic premise here? Now, we can have a unimolecular elementary reaction steps in which we have one molecule that decomposes into other things. If I was going to do a rate law, rate laws are determined from elementary steps. If this is my reaction and I was doing a rate law, my rate law would be equal to my rate constant times concentration of A because there's only one A there. If I was doing a bimolecular, where I have A banging into A to make products, then my rate is gonna be my constant times the concentration of A times the concentration of A or A squared. This is how I get a second order reaction. If I have a bimolecular with A with a different molecule, my rate is gonna be equal to K times A concentration times B concentration. If I have three molecules, extremely rare, but if I do have three reacting together, I get A plus A plus A, my rate's gonna be Ka cubed. A plus A plus B yielding products, Ka squared B, if I have A plus B plus C, K times A times B times C. The rate laws get determined by the elementary reaction. Now, how many of you go from Brandon to Tampa or from Tampa to Brandon and you're not using the Selman? What is the thing that, proceed, that causes you to go the slowest? Isn't it the I-4-275 interchange? You can't get through that. That is going to slow you up. So if I have, if I'm going from Tampa to Brandon, I'm going to get slowed up by my first interchange. And by the time I get to the to the uh, I-75 interchange, things are proceeding fairly rapidly, right? On the other hand, if I'm going from Brandon to Tampa, the I-75 interchange slows me a little, but not enough when compared to the I-4-275 interchange. The overall reaction, you cannot get to Tampa faster than you get through the I-4-275 interchange. That is the rate determining step in your journey from Brandon to Tampa. So therefore, your overall reaction cannot go faster than the slowest rate determining step. So your rate determining step determines your rate law. So if we're doing these reactions, I want you to write the complete reaction at the bottom of the problem. 
Also, write down the reaction you derive from the reaction law. This is going to be the slow step. If all the reactants in your slow step are the same as the reactants in your final equation, it's likely that's where you're beginning. If something else is present, then another reaction must precede that one. You've got the reactants. You write a product that is different from the reactants in a slow step. Balance that reaction. Then you're gonna use the product from the slow step with any other remaining reactants to form the final reaction. And we're gonna see if it works. Guidelines though, only the exact reactants in the rate equations may be part of the slow step. All the reactants and all the products must add up to get the final reaction. Charges and balance, charges and atoms must balance and the exact same species may not appear on both sides of the same equation. Again, guys, this is a puzzle. If you like puzzles, you'll enjoy this. If you detest puzzles, you are going to hate this. Okay, I have my overall reaction. 2NO plus Br2 yields 2NOBr. Okay. That is my final equation. It goes on the bottom. Now, I have to use the rate law. The rate law has NO squared. This means my simple reaction is going to have NO plus NO yielding something. Okay, I got to figure out what it could possibly yield. Okay, I'm gonna go with N2O4. We're gonna be very simple about this. So if this reacts to make NO, N2O4, then I can react it with my remaining reagent to make two NOBRs and everything cancels out. Are we good with this, guys? I can't. I, I'm sorry. Is this Jana? Who's talking? Okay. I, I'm not having. I'm gonna have to. You're gonna have to go slow. How do you decide that you're gonna put N two O four in the product section? I just decided to put that. Okay. It could have been something else. I could have put N2O. I could have put NO2. Okay. I could have done, I could have done any number of things. Okay. But I just chose N2O4. Now, I then have my N2O4. The simplest thing would be to just have my BRs here. And that reacts with this to make this final product. Questions, guys? Let's look at the strategy. I have my rate law being K concentration of A squared. My overall reaction is A going to 2B, okay? My A is in my final reaction. So that probably is involved with my first step. Yet, I have it squared. So I have to have A plus A 
yielding something. I can have A plus A yielding another product plus a B. Now, the simplest way for me to fix this up would be having, understand, I have to, I've got my A's, right? Ladies and gentlemen, do I have my A's? Do I have too many A's on the reactant side? So I got to have an A on a product side to cancel one of these A's out. I have an AC on the product side that doesn't exist in the final product. So I can take my AC, put it in as my second reaction. I can have it react with another compound. Now this is gonna make a D plus B. Keep in mind, my ACs cancel. I then am gonna take my, I want both of these Bs, right? I want both of these Bs, but I gotta get rid of an A and a D. So I'm simply gonna take my AD reacting to make A plus D. This A cancels with one of my A's. AC cancels with AC. D cancels with this D, this AD cancels with this AD. I end up with A going to two Bs. This is the hardest thing I've found since I've been teaching 2046 for, for people to understand. It is a game. It is a puzzle. And I'm going off on my tangent here. So I could have, That is my overall reaction. Okay. So I have to put my overall reaction down at the bottom. I'm start off my A that's going to go with this. For kicks and giggles, that's what we're starting with. Okay. Does this fulfill my slow step? Does it? All right. Now, riddle me this. Do I want to keep B? I'm sorry. Do I want to keep D? No. Right now. Now, do I want to keep D? Yes. Okay. I want to keep D there, but I want to get rid of what? B. 
So I'm going to take my next step. I'm going to have B react with something. to make Okay. Have I gotten rid of my bees? Yes. Okay. Make a suggestion as to what I do here. I want to use a product. I want to keep D. I want to make an AC. Suggest something, Jordan. Do I want that BE in there? No. So I'm going to use it as a reactant so I can cancel it out. So could you put um, maybe like AC or A plus C on that side? What do I want to get rid of here? What do the, I want to get rid of? The E. Now I have a C on this side. Again, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm screwing up. <laughs> Keeping it simple is good. It's not easy, it's a puzzle. Where am I at? Where did I go from there? Uh, so I, I can't figure out where I lost my thing. I should know not to do this.
that'll work. Okay, what you're trying to do strategically, you got to use the right step to develop where you're starting from. The rate equation is going to be equal to whatever reactant you have in your simple equation. So in this case, my A needs to go to something. I might as well make it make one of my products. I've got another reactant here. My other reactant will then react to make B plus B. I don't need B plus B. I can get rid of that. And when I get rid of that, I'm making AC. I got AC on this side. I need it. B plus B, B plus B, they cancel. I need D, B squared here. So it's a simple way. We're going to work on these first part of Thursday. Then we are going to do a little bit of a review in terms of thinking questions. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, I will see you again on Thursday then. I'll see six of you later on today. Take care, guys. Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you. Keanu. Yes, sir. Keanu, I got you marked absent. You got to be here the whole time. I'll check it off now, but from now on, you need here to be here the whole time. Samantha, Professor. are you still here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, unless you need to see me, guys, I need to get off for, for Dale Mabry. Professor. Yes, sir. Danny? Yes, for the for the graphing quiz, we have until two to, to to finish it, right? I I gave you until six one. I don't know what time it is. Okay, that's okay. If you get it if you get it done by that time, I will count it because it is in the schedule that way. Normally speaking, Danny, it's going to be end of Sunday, Sunday at midnight. For the what? for all labs. So I went through the heat of vaporization today. On Thursday, we're going through freezing point. All reports from freezing point and heat of vaporization, two separate experiments need to be turned in midnight on Sunday. Okay, freezing point. And That's what I'm doing on Thursday and heat of vaporization. It should be in the announcements. Perfect. And also, um, for the graph during the quiz, we're supposed to use the graph we, were, we had due on Sunday? Yes. OK. And in, um, OK. Thank you're you. You're supposed to put them, you're supposed to upload them in the Dropbox. I will check to see if that's available. If it's not available, I will make it available to you. For this quiz? For this quiz, yes. You have to submit graphs in one place, finish the quiz in the other. Because I started this quiz, it has, it has no time due, but I started it and I realized that I needed the, the graph that is not in the quiz. So which I get to that Danny, I which experiment? For me? Which experiment? I'm talking about the graphing quiz. Okay. So I started it and I realized that I didn't have the graph, but it's a you separate- You have to make the graph, Danny. Gotcha, yeah, it's a separate assignment. Um, yes. With what information should I make the, the, the graph with? Look at the information. The first three data tables. The first data table, you have to do a hand-drawn graph. The next two data tables, you can use Excel. Okay, and um, right. it's okay if I leave the quiz open since it has no due time? It has a due date, Danny. It was, no, do to be, it was supposed to be Sunday at midnight. No, okay. 
It's okay. It is whatever the date is now. I will give you till midnight tonight. That's it. Okay, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Keanu, do you have a question, Keanu? Thank you. Have a good day. You have a good day too, Danny. Keanu, do you have a question? Okay, let me see. I got more. Okay. There's a way for me to get a remove, yes. Okay, Samantha. Yeah. All right. This is not like this is not like it was during the spring semester. You yeah. gotta keep up. If you're not gonna keep up, then you're gonna go by the wayside and you're gonna get it. You're, you're gonna be withdrawing from the class. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I just am familiar enough with you to know that you wait to the last minute to do things, but yeah. you can't do that this in the summer. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. I will see you on Thursday then. Okay. See you then.